Hi everyone, I'm CJ Moore with Basketball Perspectives, and today I'm taking a look at some guys who did not play a lot of minutes last season, but could become stars this upcoming year. I call them the Deshaun Thomas All-Stars. The Buckeyes forward had a high usage rate and was highly productive in limited minutes as a freshman a couple seasons ago, so it wasn't a surprise when Thomas became on the Big Ten's best this past year as a sophomore. Looking through the advanced stats of some of the best teams in the country last season, I found four guys who should become starters and break out this upcoming year. Number four on the list is Marquette Junior to be center Devontae Gardner. At 6'8 and 290 pounds, Gardner is a bit on the heavy side. He played only 19 minutes a game as a sophomore, but that might have been more because of the Golden Eagles talent and not necessarily his weight. Gardner's advanced stats show with more time he could be a very productive big man. He was the best offensive rebounder on the team. And he played enough minutes, and had he played enough minutes, he would have been top 15 nationally in offensive rebounding percentage. Gardner also showed a good ability to get packed as he drew six fouls for 40 minutes and shot 76% at the line. With Jay Gardner and Darius Johnson Odom graduating, Buzz Williams will be looking for some role players to make a bigger contribution. And Williams, who loves his advanced stats, will be hard pressed to look at Gardner's numbers and not give the big man more people. Number three on the list is Syracuse senior-to-be wing James Sutherland. The Orange have been stacked on the perimeter in Sutherland's first three seasons. Wesley Johnson was the go-to man in Sutherland's freshman year, and the last two years he played behind Chris Joseph and Dion Waiters. When Sutherland did get on the court, he had a ridiculous 121 offensive rating and took nearly 24% of the Cuse's shots. Sutherland at 6'8 is the perfect athlete for the Syracuse's zone defense, and offensively, he's mostly a spot-up shooter, so we will rely on others to set him up. But with Joseph, Waiters, and Scoop Jardine all gone, plenty of shots should be available. Number two on the list is Kentucky sophomore-to-be Kyle Wilcher. Wilcher, who was a highly ranked big man coming out of high school, found it tough to get on the floor with Anthony Davis and Terrence Jones in front of him. He was nowhere near the defender as those two, so he only saw spot minutes here and there. When he was in, he proved that he is an extremely talented offensive player with the ability at 6'9 to float to the perimeter. He also wasn't afraid to chuck it, taking nearly 25% of the shots when he was on the court and knocking down 43% of his threes. With Kentucky's six leading scorers all going pro, there will be, there will be plenty of opportunities to look for, Calipari, look for Calipari to find a way to get Wiltshire to the shot. And finally, number one on the list is UNC sophomore-to-be James Michael McAdoo. McAdoo might not exactly fit the criteria for this list, as his advanced numbers were not all that impressive, and he's also a player who is already expected to be high-impact player. McAdoo declared for the draft in the spring and smartly pulled out as he has a chance to really show his stuff this upcoming season. As I said, McAdoo's numbers didn't blow anyone away. He was a fairly high usage player, taking 20% of his team shots when he was in the game, but he only made 43% of his tips. That's a really low percentage for a big in Roy Williams offense, where big men typically get plenty of touches close to the bucket through secondary breakout games. I have McAdoo number one mostly because he, he aced the eye test. He impressed me in person in the Elite Eight, and unlike Henson, he was not pushed around by KU in that game. McAdoo is built like an NBA big man already and runs the floor really well, which is key in Roy's offense. I think his skill level was starting to catch up to his athletic ability at the end of the year. With Tyler Zeller and Don Henson no longer around, he should be more than ready to become a high usage player in Roy Williams' lineup. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you in a couple weeks on the Sabermetrics Network. Thank you.